I'd say let's just win every game we ever play from now on. That'd be cool. Or jam the apocalypse. It's typically a bad thing for online poker whenever there's some uh, market segregation because when you think about any market, so like let's take America, you know, as the big market back in the day in 2011 when they got uh, when that got taken out of uh, circulation. Um, what happened was many good American poker players decided to relocate. They moved to Canada, they moved to Mexico, or whatever. Slayer, Slayer for example, was an example. Where, like moved to Mexico, keeps playing good poker. Great, we've got regs in our games happy days and every recreational who you know wasn't a poker professional was like well i'm not moving i just can't play anymore i'll go play the lottery or something which apparently is still legal even though poker isn't because of the strange legality loops of many areas anyway um so it's always a bad thing and so we'll probably what we'll see is a lot of the uh, best uh russian professionals uh, move to wherever they need to move to. I mean, you know, you can obviously move to lots of different places. Very welcome in the UK. Um, but, uh, you know, Thailand or someone said Georgia, but I think Georgia, so then someone else clarified Georgia wasn't an option. Belarus is an option. Uh, some of the Baltics or something. Anyway, wherever wherever people may find themselves moved to, I wish them good luck. And, and Udachi, Drugs, yeah. Just remember that. If you're ever struggling, remember what your old Uncle Tomo says, Udachi Drug, and you'll be like, yeah, I've got it. I can make this work. Okay, okay. We talked about Eddie, mentioned that. We win again, by the way. Just going to win again for the fifth time now. Six in a row coming up. Insane. I don't think we've ever done, I don't know. On stream, I'm not sure what the record is, but I'm pretty happy with how this has gotten started. I want to see you winning some juicy win and sipping coke after it like a pro. That is how all the pros do it, by the way. And uh, cheers, cheers to that dream. I would be very, very happy. I'd be very happy. Scotty says, uh, I was playing around 9 to 12 tables and 100 regular. And even when I played, there was little traffic. I don't know what will happen now after the closure of Russia. There are quite a few regs from Russia, 50s, 100s. Indeed, I mean, it will make a big difference, I think. Um, the actual dive bit. I mean, it depends a little bit what party you want to do for their... Um, what do party want to do for their leaderboard? So if party leave the leaderboards as they are, basically there's going to be massive overlay every every day. And I think, for example, I might just go and play some hundreds of regs because, I mean, if, hey, if we're going to get 40% rate back, I'll be like, on top of whatever, 110% rate back, I'll be like, yeah, might give that a go. But um, we'll be interesting. Uh, let's see if they can bring some more traffic here. Would be nice, but... All right, let's call the King Seven. Our winning streak is at risk, just to clarify. So our uh, five in a row, we need to hit a club or a seven or a king. Well, there's one of them. There's two of them. See, yes. It didn't work. It didn't work, ladies and gentlemen. We got two arrogant hubris, yeah? Pride comes before the fall, and we have fallen off a cliff now. And now the losses begin. <laughs> Julie with poker says, how are you winning every game? Lol. Uh, we just confirmed Julio how we're winning every game. We won the all-ins. We stopped winning the all-ins, so that, that didn't go so well, huh? But anyway. Aoub says, this game is too easy. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll find out at the end of the day. Actually, to be honest, we'll find out at the end of the year, or at the end of a 30k sample, because, yeah, that's sort of, the, that's sort of what we want to be thinking about to be honest next game is a really easy jump just going to tank a little bit because i like to pretend i've got tough decisions there we get called by a6 which is pretty standard and we hold which is nice a big sweat on that flop i did not think we were going to win there but happy days we got the win so that's good we'll jam the jack nine for eight point something have a little sip of diet coke our grooms, I'm living the dream. Win a big all in. Have a little sip. Take it down. Ace 10 will be an easy jam. Gonna not snap jam it just because I always am aware of time it tells. And so try and imagine I've got a bit of a bad hand and then take a similar amount of time. It may be over, complete overkill. But um, uh, I think if I'm aware of it, may as well take advantage if that makes sense. Hope it makes sense. 
Ah, right, we'll just check this, obviously. Flopping a pair. Okay, jack to five. So some room to sell. Let's check raise this hand. So it's quite a nice one to check raise. Um, somewhat, like, this is terrible, obviously, uh, uh, out redraws, if you like. And against a, a limp stab, it's easy to over limp stab this board. So I will go for a little check raise here. Um, we have the best hand quite frequently. Um, and it is easy to, again, it's easy to over limp stab that board. Uh, we'll start with a check on this ace. Uh, will be a card, obviously, that we won't be checking lots of our, uh, hands against. Um, if we face a bet here, probably just going to fold because this would be a turn that I would check my entire range. So I would check all my value hands here. So I check all my jack X, I check all my 2-5, I check all 3-4, for example, whatever. And so with this hand, it's probably one of the worst hands we have. We have a couple of, let's say, um, like back doors that I've missed. If we had maybe a hand like 6-7 or suited or something. But we have some 4 and 3-X and yeah, I think we're pretty happy. Um, we'll jam the king too. You don't have to check raise that, you can check cool. Uh, that would also be absolutely fine as well. But um, sometimes I like check raise, sometimes I'll check call. Depends what mood I'm in. And randomizers. Let's go with that, yeah. All right, we'll go again. Have a little sit. Oh, no, it's the wrong Diet Coke. I'm That's too early. This is skipping ahead there. Spoiler alert. I've got another Diet Coke ready. Eval, Eval Dissimo. Thank you very much for the follow. Did I pronounce Eval Dissimo? Did I pronounce your name correctly, because I've been saying lots of names wrong, and, uh, onions, I assume you mean onions are greens, so that would be onions, a gruns, a gruns, is a gruns correct, Isaac said, if I remind you how I became a mod, I'm scared I might get unmodded, it's not gonna happen, surely not, let's unmod him, no, <laughs> he's worked hard for this position, we did a lot of interviews, um, a lot of people turned up, and, most of them were just Tofu replica accounts. And Isaac was actually the only one that wasn't Tofu. We had 18 applicants. 17 of them were just Tofu in different names. Just going, hey, Cammy, my dog's here or something. And then we went, who's who's the last one on the thing? And it, Isaac, yeah, give it Isaac. And he's like, do you want to know anything about him? Nah, mod, mod him. Mod him up. And we did and we never looked back. It's been brilliant ever since. He runs a little poll sometimes. Does a little competition. Fantastic. Added some commands we're very happy with. Isaac, I think he's one of being the best mods ever. A low bar, admittedly, but he's up there. All-time mod hall of fame. Well done, mate. Thank you. Okay, can we miss a spade? We don't need to. Let's hit a spade for a laugh. Oh. Uh, do you ever plan to bring guests by your side while you play? We definitely could. Um, any requests? I want to see Tom bring Phil Helmuth. That's the request. Uh, Phil Hummuth, I think, will be a challenge. He did used to follow me on Twitter, and used to be me and Phil used to be pretty tight and close. But he uh, he unfollowed me at some point because I hadn't tweeted for a year, and he only followed about twenty five people. And I was like, I was just surprised he, I you know, I stayed that long. Did not take advantage of it. So I can how to play different boards: uh, one color board, uh, two color boards, and rainbow. So yeah, you definitely want to think who, in some of the spots. Think about who's got more flushes. Um, so if you're playing heads up, for example. Uh, depends a little bit on how deep stacked you are. So if you're six BB effective, like you have six big blinds, you may shove all your suited hands, right? Because there's not many hands you won't shove at that point when you've got six BB heads up. Whereas if you're 15 big blinds effective, you will have a lot more hands that you might have limped in that are suited. And so that's important. Also think about how much ASEX and King X do you have where you can have some flush drain stuff, uh, flush draws and things on those sort of boards. One thing to mention, let's say you're playing a button versus big blind spot. The big blind has defends often all their suited stuff, whereas the button doesn't raise everything suited. And so um, the button, when they min raise, will raise some suited hands, but won't raise, let's say, 8-5 suited typically, or 9-4 suited, whereas the big blind will defend those kind of hands. And so on suited boards, you can think about in uh, that. In on rainbow boards, typically what happens on rainbow boards, and this is again a general rule, but trying to give you some, some answers because as much as I can at Akimeti. Tell me if you want to know something more specific, by the way, if you want heads up or three-handed or wherever, three bets, for example. But in general, on the rainbow boards, you typically have highest uh, ag aggression from the last to act. So if you're the, the raiser, the three-better, the limper, whoever was the one that V-pipped and made the slightly more aggressive move pre-flop, whoever V-pipped, if you like, or raised or whatever, 
that's typically the person that will have an advantage. Hey, Queens is great. We're going to call here. Did we win the last one? We did update our binds. Yes, we did, I think, right? Or did we not? I was so not paying attention. I didn't even look if we won that game or not. Oh, no, we didn't win. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. There's not a fast and set rule for playing um, uh, monotone boards or playing rainbow boards or playing two-tone boards. As in monotone is like all the same suits, all the same colours. Um, and rainbows obviously all different colours. There's not one rule that uh, it applies to all of them. But there's little trends that you can pick up. And in general, I think monotone boards, people typically misplay them a lot. Um, but they are a bit rarer. Monotone boards only happen something like under 10% of the time. So less than 1 in 10 boards flops your play will be the same suit. And therefore, if you're going to misplay one of those, misplay the monotone boards would be better. Uh, Two-tone will be the most common board, so it's good to look that up. But let me know if you want something more specific, Akamati, but that's as best as I can give you in terms of the broad trends. Ain't that suited? We're happy with fold. We're happy with three. We're happy with heads up. It's a pretty happy, happy, happy days all around. We'll take a call from worse or a fold or a that's fine as well. And that's a fine flop. And he says, there was a guy that won the million spins in party a couple of days ago in the hundreds. Do you know who? Uh, yes. Uh, any, uh, I do. Uh, give me a second. And I will tell you who that is. As we win, we're back on the winning spree, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get up to 8K. 